Welcome everyone to Eye on Education. I am Ben Shaberman, Senior Director of Scientific Outreach at the Foundation Fighting Blindness, and I'm pleased to present this quick overview of optogenetics, a promising approach for restoring vision to people with advanced retinal degenerative diseases. So let's get started. And to start, I'd like to provide a quick overview of optogenetics. And when we're talking about optogenetics, essentially what we mean is bestowing light sensitivity to a neural cell that's normally not light sensitive. Now, why would we want to do that to, let's say, a brain cell or, or a cell of the uh, central nervous system? Well, we can better monitor those cells when they're light sensitive, and we can actually control their activity when they're light sensitive. So those are the two applications. And researchers are investigating optogenetics for a variety of conditions, uh, neural conditions, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injuries, depression, sleep disorders, and, and many other conditions. Now, of course, we are interested in optogenetics because of the promise they, uh, it holds for restoring vision uh, for the retina. So on this particular slide, on the left, I have a side view image of the retina. And toward the top are the photoreceptors, the rods and cones. These are the cells that normally make vision possible. Now, in people with advanced retinal diseases who have lost all their vision, they've lost their eyesight because they've lost all their rods and cones. And in this particular image, I have this ax going through the photoreceptors to signify somebody who's lost all their vision because they've lost, again, all their rods and cones. But what some very clever researchers observed is that there are other cells in the retina that survive after photoreceptors are gone, namely bipolar cells and ganglion cells. And in this diagram, I have those bipolar cells and ganglion cells circled toward the bottom here. Now, normally bipolar cells and ganglion cells don't process light. They're not light sensitive. They're important for vision, but they're not absorbing light. But what these clever researchers have done is they have delivered light sensitive genes, or I should say genes that express light sensitive proteins to these bipolar and ganglion cells to make them operate something like photoreceptors. So essentially they work like a backup system for photoreceptors. And again, these cells tend to survive even after photoreceptors are lost. Now, most often uh, the researchers are targeting ganglion cells or bipolar cells but in some cases, they're also targeting cones that have stopped functioning but haven't fully degenerated. So there are those applications as well. And while I'll be talking about optogenetics, delivering a gene to do this, there are some companies that are using small molecules or chemicals to bestow light sensitivity to these bipolar cells and ganglion cells as well. Now, when we're designing an optogenetic treatment, there are some important things that we need to keep in mind, some important questions we need to carefully consider. Will a treatment work in natural light? As we're going to learn in a couple of slides, some of the treatments tend to work best in bright light. It'd be nice if we could get the treatment to work in more natural light, because if we need really bright light, we may need a device to amplify the light coming into the retina. Also, will the treatment enable cells in the retina to refresh quickly so that we can process movement and changes in the visual scene? When we see a car go by or a child chasing a soccer ball, usually that image is continuous because our cells in the retina are, ch are adapting to that changing environment quickly. Well, we need a treatment that will continue to enable us to process 
um, these quickly changing scenes and movement. And another question that we're still frankly trying to answer is how much acuity can an optogenetic treatment provide? Will we be able to read or recognize faces? Optogenetic treatments are still in, in clinical trials. They're in early stage clinical trials and we're still learning about them. But the hope is as, as these trials advance and we um, advance the technology, that will get back some decent level of visual acuity. So what are some of the advantages of optogenetics? Well, one of the big ones is it's appropriate for people who have lost all or most of their vision. Another important element is that it's designed, optogenetics is designed to work independent of the mutated gene causing the person's disease, so it's gene agnostic. Also, we're using existing gene therapy technologies, I should say gene therapy delivery technologies to deliver optogenetic therapies. So in gene replacement or gene augmentation therapy, we're using AAV viruses to get the genes into the cells and those AAV viruses are performing relatively well in trials. Well, the nice thing is we're able to leverage that technology to also get the genes that we use in optogenetics into the bipolar and ganglion cells. And as I said before, though optogenetics is still a pretty new approach, it is in clinical trials. Now, I'm not gonna review the trials during this training session, you can learn more about the trials at our website, fightingblindness.org, and get updates on results. But people in these trials, the patients, are getting some rudimentary vision improvements. They're seeing things like candles or a dog running through the snow. And hopefully, as these trials move forward and the technologies move forward, they'll be able to see even more. Now, the challenges, I've alluded to some of these already. We need um, therapies that will hopefully not require such bright light. Some of the therapies that are in trials now do. And because of that, we need special goggles or glasses to amplify the light coming in. And again, we need therapies that will enable the retina to respond quickly to changes in movement and changes in the visual scenery. And again, we're still learning how much vision optogenetics will ultimately restore. So where are we getting the genes that are bestowing light sensitivity to bipolar cells and ganglion cells? Well, believe it or not, we're getting these genes in at least some of the cases from algae. Algae need light sensitive genes as part of photosynthesis. So this was a, a, re a readily available source for optogenetic therapies. Now, the, the challenge with these, what we call microbial proteins, is they do require very bright light. So a lot of these um, therapies that are based on algae genes do require glasses or goggles. The good news is that the proteins from these genes do help the retina respond to changes in visual scenery pretty quickly. So they are fast and will help us see um, images and movement um, without uh, blurring or aberrations in vision. Now, another newer source for the genes that can make bipolar cells and ganglion cells light sensitive are coming from humans, from human cones. And these genes express what we call cone opsins. And a big advantage of these cone opsins is they'll help us see in more natural light. There's a better chance we're not gonna need goggles or glasses to amplify the image coming into the retina. And on the left side of this slide is just a, a picture of a human cone. And again, this is where um, 
some of the newer optogenetic therapies are deriving the genes and related proteins. On the right side of the diagram is the protein that these uh, genes express, the cone opsin protein. And it's sort of a coily, stringy um, kind of structure that again enables uh, uh, light sensitivity in cones and in optogenetic therapies, hopefully bipolar cells and or ganglion cells. So to conclude this quick overview of optogenetics, I wanted to end with the remaining question, what will people see? Because we're still learning this. Again, in early clinical trials, results have been encouraging and promising. But as these trials move along, we're going to learn more. And hopefully with even better optogenetic therapies in the pipeline, we'll have uh, better options in clinical trials before too long. But I also included a beautiful image. This is an image of big wave surfer Justine Dupont. It's actually a photograph, and it shows her a tiny little speck underneath this huge wave, this big curl. And it's, it's just a beautiful image. And I'm showing this because I'm hoping through optogenetics that we can help people who have lost all their vision get enough vision back to appreciate a beautiful picture like big wave surfer Justine Dupont riding, riding this, this huge wave, this beautiful curl. So that concludes my quick overview of optogenetics. Again, go to the website, fightingblindness.org. You're probably there already for updates on some of the clinical trials. Thanks for joining.